In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. I welcome you on this, uh, what is a lovely morning here in Cannock. Let's put a picture on the screen, so we've got some colour there. A lovely morning in Cannock. It's about 11 degrees, apparently, and it's going to warm up to a, a very, uh, a very uh, sizzling 17 degrees later in the day so not that hot really but nevertheless a beautiful day and beautiful to be with you to celebrate this mass despite the restrictions and limitations we have upon our worship and our fellowship together it's a really important thing that we do today Jesus says if you if you love me you will keep my commandments and it's love fellowship respect but the deep bonds of affection which hold us in him him in us and us together too. So as we begin this Mass, let's call to mind our sins and ask God for his mercy and his grace. You raise the dead to life in the Spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you.
comes Almighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion. Oh, God doesn't need to wait, but perhaps we do. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy which we keep in honour of the risen Lord and that what we relive in remembrance we may always hold on to in what we do. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. Now we have our readings from Scripture. As always, they are pre-recorded by members of our uh, parish family here, uh, and uh, we listen to God's Word now, and indeed, we'll sing the psalm during this as well. Reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked, or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples who were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, and they went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit, for as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord Christ in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with courtesy and respect, and with a clear conscience, so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is with the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than doing wrong. Why, Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins, died for the guilty to lead us to God. In the body he was put to death, in the spirit 
he was raised to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If the world hates you, remember that it hated me before you. If you belong to the world, the world would love you as its own. But because you do not belong to the world, because my choice withdrew you from the world, Therefore the world hates you. Remember the words I said to you, a servant is not greater than his master. If they persecuted me, they will persecute you too. If they keep my word, they will keep yours as well. But it will be on my account that they will do all this, because they do not know the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus says in today's Gospel, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. We are beset at present, well aren't we always actually, with rules and regulations guidance uh, and impositions of things which some people feel very strongly take away their personal liberty. We have commandments to follow from the civil authorities and very important many of them are and very strange some of them are, very irksome some of them are. Commandments ultimately are words which are said to us and indeed which we say to other people. And it's easy to say words which seem to mean a lot and yet don't. We can say several things without really meaning them. We can say sorry to get us out of a situation. We can say thank you when we're not really grateful. We might even say we love someone out of routine or habit or to get what we want. Yet the person who's truly sorry not only says so, but shows sorrow by their their attitude, their anguish, their desire to make amends. The person who's really grateful shows their gratitude by their generosity of spirit, their joy in receiving. And the one who truly loves does so not routinely or selfishly, but with caring and compassion. Words are indeed powerful. Regulations, laws govern our lives, but deeds are more important than words. We may say we are sorry to God for our sins, but it is only true contrition, real regret, which deserves from him the fullness of forgiveness. We may thank God in prayer and song, but it's the gratitude which comes from the heart, which really fills us with joy. And we may may say that we love God as he loves us. But it's a heart that loves God in the neighbour, the outcast, the forgotten, that truly dwells in him. Keep my commandments doesn't mean follow all the rules. It means open your hearts to him. Be filled with his grace. Receive the gifts of the spirit, the spirit of truth who's with us forever. It means that if we love him, then we love our neighbour. 
and we love his commandments because they are the gift we make of our lives to him. We now affirm together our faith. We say together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. We now come to our bidding prayers, and it's a great, it's a great joy and privilege and responsibility indeed that we have so many petitions which are sent to us and which we're asked to share. And uh, if you want the sheet to produce a, a sheet with our notice sheet every week, which has got those petitions on, please ask and I will send them to you uh, by, through WhatsApp or email or whatever. Just please contact us, look at the contact details uh, in, on Facebook, you'll find them there and you can uh, let us know and we'll send them to you. Uh, also, people have submitted not just specific prayers, like, uh, you know, for different named people, but general things. And I think they're, they're very, very important, and perhaps particularly at the weekend, where it would be so difficult to read out all the names, which we do read out on weekdays. So I'm going to use those as, as part of our bidding prayers today, uh, as well as remember some people we specifically uh, need to pray for. This Mass today is offered for the soul of Bert Owen. May he rest in peace. Amen. And we have also many others who've passed from this life uh, in recent times and those who've uh, died in the past week, I will just uh, call to mind now. And they are, um, well, Kathleen Manelli in particular and also those who died last weekend, uh, Bill Killian, Joss Fielding, Tony Goff. And there are many others too whose uh, souls we commend to God's great love and mercy. Do remember them, please, in general and in particular. We also pray for those who are uh, sick at this time. Particularly, we're asked to pray today for Jason, who's been admitted to New Cross Hospital. He has uh, uh, an infection of the brain, which is obviously very dangerous, and he's very poorly. So please keep him in your prayers too. Thankful for the many blessings in our lives, for family and friends, for carers and key workers. Let's bring our petitions before God, the Almighty Father. We pray for everyone during this time of pandemic, isolation and lockdown, that we may be strong in faith, keep safe from harm, rekindle old skills, learn new things, avoid loneliness and despair, and be responsible and considerate in our dealings with others, always aware that when we show Christ's love to others, he dwells in them and he in us. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who feel intensely the pain of isolation, especially those who have many health problems and mental health problems and other conditions which make it difficult for them to cope with changes in routine, that they may not be overlooked or forgotten by society as Christ surely walks with them in their anguish and struggle. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our courageous health workers, for all staff and service users in social care, and for all volunteers bringing assistance to those who are isolated, and for all key workers, that they and their families may remain safe as they provide close and compassionate care for those who are in need. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. And we pray for all those who are sick, those poorly with the virus, that they may make a full recovery for those in need of treatment which has been postponed or delayed, for those in hospital care for whatever reason, or who cannot receive visitors, that they may know Christ's presence with them and feel our closeness in our prayers. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for those who have departed this life. May the Lord grant peace to the dying, comfort to mourners, and eternal rest to the dead, that when the sorrows and trials of this life are past, we may be reunited in his eternal kingdom. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. O God, protector of all who hope in you, bless your people. 
Keep us safe, defend us, prepare us, that free from sin and safe from the enemy, we may persevere always in your love, through Christ our Lord. Amen. For my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Oh, that didn't make a big bang. Drop the microphone. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It's truly right and just. Our duty, our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He's the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. full of your glory Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest Blessed, blessed, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Saviour of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Bernard, our Bishop, William and David, his assistants, and all the clergy. Remember your servant, Bert Owen, for whom this Mass is offered, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that he who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. Remember also our brothers and sisters who've fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed Apostles, with St. Thomas More, with blessed John Sugar, and all the saints who've pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ, through him, and with him, and in him. O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always, and with your spirit. And now, let's offer one another. There's 117 of us, apparently. That's just computers connected. Obviously, it's more, sometimes more than one person. Let's wish one another across the world, from Canuck to the ends of the earth, the, the peace and the love and the joy of the Lord. Peace be with you all. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ for me to everlasting life. The blood of Christ for me to everlasting life. The communion antiphon. Come to me, all who labour and are burdened, and I will refresh you, says the Lord. And 
I invite you to make your own act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the holy sacrament of the altar. I love you above all things, and I passionately desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come spiritually into my soul, so that I may unite myself wholly to you, now and forever. Amen. Well, I hope this Mass has been some uh, hope and inspiration and uh, a good way to mark this Holy Day of Sunday. Um, We have a Holy Day this week uh, on Thursday, which is Ascension Day. Now, of course, there are no Holy Days of Obligation because the obligation has been waived for obvious reasons uh, during this time of uh, the pandemic and uh, lockdown and so on, all the different arrangements, at least in England and Wales, that's the case. Uh, but it's a day we should mark. It's a day we remember Christ after 40 days after his resurrection, uh, rising up into heaven. And of course, the commission given to the church to carry on his work, um, the words being turned into deeds to go back to the, today's gospel. Um, mass, as usual, at 8.30 and then throughout the day, uh, on uh, you can walk, catch up or whatever they call it these days, on Facebook Live and also on YouTube. Um, and then uh, uh, and, and so on. There's also one other Saints Day we mark here this week. Uh, it's uh, St Rita of Cassia. I, I, I'm going to, I was going to point to her statue, but that's no point really because the camera's fixed. But she's she's over there, and she's actually here because her relics were put into this altar when the church was consecrated uh, almost 20 years ago now. So um, we give uh, thanks thanks for her and ask her prayers as well. Uh, St. Rita's one of those saints, and there's, there's more than one, but a saint who's the patron saint, not exactly of lost causes, but really difficult ones. And we're in a really difficult one now. So we give thanks for her, uh, for her life and her prayers, and the fellowship which we have with all the saints in heaven and on earth, uh, which gives us such strength and such joy. Throughout these days leading up to Pentecost, which is the 31st of May, we're ending Mass, or after, immediately after Mass, we're saying a decade of the Rosary, just one decade of the Rosary, uh, and uh, we, it's leading us through the whole of the Rosary. The Rosary, of course, devotions to Our Lady, but particularly as onlookers to the life of Christ and participants in his life as he shares in our life. And so the different mysteries of the Rosary are different moments, um, particular moments of revelation in the life of Christ. 
Today's is the proclamation of the gospel, which will be just in a moment. And again, as always, I'm really grateful to uh, parishioners and others who've uh, contributed things to the Mass. Of course, the musicians and the readers. This, the Hail Marys have been said by uh, the parishioners as well. This is them recorded them. I've got over 40, and it's about 44 now. Need to get to 50, so we've got five decades of them. And I'm sure we'll do that. We'll just, we could, if you've not done one yet and you want to send one, uh, you send just, just record yourself saying, reciting the Hail Mary, and we'll incorporate that into the rosary at some point during these weeks. I'm talking a lot. Shut up. Let's get on with what we're here to do. Uh, get on with the, the prayers, ask God's blessing, and also uh, to bring his love into our lives and the lives of others. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this paschal sacrament, and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The uh, third of the mysteries of light, the luminous mysteries, the proclamation of the kingdom of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Words from the Holy Gospel according to St. Mark. Jesus came preaching, the time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent, and believe the gospel. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name.
Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. And the Holy Father has particularly, particularly directed us to say uh, certain prayers uh, which are given to us for this month of May, uh, this particular month of May 2020. And this is one of those prayers which we've been using throughout after the Rosary. O oh Mary, you shine continuously on our journey as a sign of salvation and hope. We entrust ourselves to you, health of the sick, who at the foot of the cross were united with Jesus' suffering and persevered in your faith. Protectress of the Roman people, you know our needs, and we know that you will provide so that as at Cana in Galilee, joy and celebration may return after this time of trial. Help us, Mother of Divine Love, to conform ourselves to the will of the Father and to do what Jesus tells us. For he took upon himself our suffering and burdened himself with our sorrows to bring us through the cross to the joy of the resurrection. Amen. We fly to your protection, O Holy Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions in our necessities, but deliver us always from every danger, O glorious and blessed Virgin. Let our